Welcome to Just Cook It Radio, where delicious recipes and real cooking lead to amazing dishes. We cook, you listen, it works. With your hosts, Chef Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV, Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pareca here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley back behind the desk. Yeah, and actually, if you're watching on TV, you can finally see Mike. Wave, Mike. If you look, Mike waves Hello. at the camera. So we actually are able to do everybody in the studio. That looked like a parade wave. He must be practicing <laughs> like that. Like this. <laughs> <And> <laughs> his, a little, his, his, his point to you yeah. and his parade wave. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, real quick before we move on, i got to do something. 17 years ago today, I got married. Today is my 17th wedding anniversary. Thank it you. It's worth it. Not only did I do that, but at 9 o'clock 17 years ago, I was on the radio. I was on the old wow. AM 1130 WASP. And I did what we call the wedding receptions of the airway. <laughs> and if you'd like to listen to it, follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, and the link is up, and you'll get to hear people you haven't heard in a long time. So there's a few people that passed away, unfortunately, out of that group, but it was fun. We had a good time. Working on the wedding day. Yes. Yeah, I, was, I was a nervous wreck. Yeah. And I, <laughs> went to, I went to the owner of the station and, and manager, Jim Humes, and I said, Jim, I'm not going to sit in my apartment all day. And wait, I said, let me come in, let me go and do that. So not only did I do that, but my father joined me, which it's his fault that I ever got into this line of work. <laughs> and I didn't realize how often I told this story, but I was on Doug Hearth. I don't know if you guys remember Doug Hearth in Pittsburgh. I was part of Doug's group at one time. And I told the story about that, how it started when I was like eight years old. And a reel-to-reel machine came into the house, and I fell in love with it. And my dad had an air check tape. And that's how I got started into it. And if you listen to the program from 17 years ago, you'll actually hear the whole story on how it started. So did it's you do recordings back then? What's that? Did you do recording? Did I recorded. You, could you make recordings I recorded, of yourself? I recorded back when every young? show that I did. No, no, no I'm talking about oh, when, when you I was were younger. Yeah. No, they were destroyed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'd like to hear see no, those pop the, up on the, Twitter. The college, the college ones are destroyed too. Um, that was. <laughs> I had air checks from college and going, once I get a real job, I'm getting rid of these. But uh, <laughs> I recorded every show uh-huh. I did at WASP, and I have um, a handful of the shows that I did here, and mainly the interviews and stuff like that. There's one that I wish I would have done, and it was a surprise to me, but one night we were on the old station on, uh, in the middle of town, and I get called in. I'm new here. I, I'm probably just under a year. And I'm sitting there behind in the other room the newsroom and i hear this voice come on the radio go bill will you come in here right now And i'm going what the heck does this guy want it was leon sykes and i don't know if you know the history of leon leon came to me on the air and he goes late bill i can't be here next week would you mind filling in for me i mean i was blown away leon was big and oldies in the fayette county in western pennsylvania and i wish i would have that recording i have photos with leon i have all this stuff but unfortunately i don't have that that piece of tape, as we used to refer to it as. So. Was it actually tape back then? It was t- yes, it was tape back then. <laughs> hey, sometimes names just Now stick. it's all digital, but, but yeah. So, Bill, happy anniversary. That's Thank a, you. a nice yeah. story. Nice to go back. We'll have to talk more about Bill's early days in radio no, as we, we move along. No, we don't. <laughs> but today, um, one, one thing I want to mention, you said that you posted the recordings. Yeah. So follow Bill on Twitter. Follow all of us on Twitter because it is the year of the Twitter That's here right. at Just Cook That's It Radio. Right. So we've already been tweeting this morning, and we're going to tweet throughout the program, and we're going to tweet after the program and all throughout the week. So make sure you go to Twitter.com and follow at Mario Pareca, at Bill Alexander, at Mike Sackley, and at Just Cook It Radio. Right. Now, does WMBS have a Twitter? It, we do. Yes, and that is? At WMBS 590. Oh, wow, that's harder to remember. If you look at the last tweet I sent out that I you had tagged it on you, there? I yeah. also tagged WMBS. Oh, did you really? So, yeah, I, didn't, so you I can, wasn't paying attention. I was more yes. worried to get in the camera in the nether regions of the room. <laughs> the nether regions, yes. that's a good word. So, <laughs> Happy National Soup Month. Abs- I'm glad you brought did, that up. Did you it know is. it was National Soup Month until I... I, I did when you told me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been checking the food holidays as often as we used to in the early days of the program, but it is National Soup Month, and I remember not so long ago, a few weeks back, I had a special request from Bill Alexander to make broccoli cheddar Mm, soup. Yes. So I figured being National Soup Month and being that Bill requested it, I would go ahead and indulge you. And now that I know that it's your anniversary, you can count this as your anniversary present Thank you very much. (laughs) 
See, I'm always thinking. And I forgot Tupperware today to take home, some home for my wife. I have some for you. Ah, there you go. Yep. I can let you borrow that. So <laughs> we're going to make broccoli cheddar soup today. And feel free to call us. 724-438-4593 is the local number. Again, 724-438-4593. And if you want to call us toll free, if you're listening online, you can call us at 855-590-0590. Again, 855-590-0590. Give us a call. If we're talking all things soup today. And uh, I think for the next week or at least at least the next week, maybe the next couple weeks, we'll do a different variation of soup or a different type of soup just because it's National Soup Month so we can sell celebrate it correctly okay so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to talk some broccoli cheddar soup now i know a lot of people this is one of the most popular soups my sister it's loves really? this soup um and i think there's there's a place that makes sandwiches and salads and soups oh okay i know and they kind of popularized it yes. so um not that we're going to mention their name no but you know who i'm talking yeah, about i, I mean so, you could i mean that would <laughs> boast well for us in the future what, you mean Panera? Panera yeah. Yes. So Panera makes a broccoli cheddar soup that people seem to like. My soup's a little different, and I like, you know, you can get it in a can, but I'm not a big canned soup fan. The sodium's through the oh, roof, yeah. and it just doesn't have very And if you go into Panera to get to it. their broccoli cheddar soup, just mention that you heard it on Just Cook It. Yes, please yeah. do. And maybe they'll give you a hug or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, or they'll call us. Anyway. Obviously, I like to go fresh, like I said, and this is broccoli for those of you. I know I'm sure everyone knows what broccoli looks like, but this is the fresh variety. So this isn't the stuff that's frozen that yes, comes in the yes. bag or the can or whatever. This is what you buy in the so, produce Yeah, section. so you're going to buy it like this. And for this recipe, you know, you're going to need – and the recipe is posted at justcookit.net. So okay. if you if you want to follow along with us there, you can go ahead and check that out. But um, so what I like to do is to prepare the broccoli, I like to pull – see these leaves here? These little leaves. You There's gonna, actually uh, leaves on broccoli? Yeah, see. Oh, broccoli I didn't realize leaves. that. Now, you can eat these. They won't hurt you, but I, I just pulled them off. Okay. I don't like to use those. And then I, uh, for soup anyway, for other things right. you can use them. And then you want to keep the, st I cut the florets off, which I have the florets here. So okay. these are the little florets, which are the tops of the broccoli. And I keep the stems. And the stems I actually dice. Dice up. You now can what, see, and I'll show the camera. What is the best part of broccoli? The whole thing, I mean, nutrient-wise yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, the whole thing's very good. Um, there's a lot of fiber in the stems. Okay. And I like uh, the florets are the most common part, yes. the tops here that look like little trees. Trees. Um, and broccoli, believe it or not, is actually part of the cabbage family. Oh, really? So, yeah, the name broccoli comes from an Italian word and has a reference that. to cabbage. So, yeah, and it's also related, obviously, to the cauliflower. It's like a distant cousin of the cauliflower, okay. so it's all the same family. But um, I love broccoli. I like it in a bunch of different ways. And broccoli and cheddar cheese are just like two things that just go together. Right. They're just like friends, and they work together really well. So what we're going to do here is to get this started, I have our pot on, okay? And this is making th – this is a very, very simple soup to make, believe it or not. So – um, you can make this at home. It's not that much different. The only difference between this and a can, really, in my opinion, is a can is opener. The can opener. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little more prep involved, okay. and the cook time. This yeah. takes a little longer, but it doesn't take that much longer, believe it or not, because it's a fresh soup. So we're gonna start with some olive oil. Okay. Okay, about two tablespoons, and we're gonna get that in the bottom of the pan. And now, again, whenever you're cooking anything, even with this, it's not as important, but you always want to have your pan hot first. It'll cut down on your time. Then when you add the olive oil, right. it'll heat it up faster. And we're going to add to this, I have an onion. Okay, Are we sweating, rough are, are we sweating the onions? We're sweating them. Yeah, okay. it's warm in here. I remembered it this week. That's when they become translucent. because <laughs> I quizzed you on that last I know, week. you put me on the spot. And then I have some garlic here, about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Okay, we're going to add that right to the pan. And there's another word that we referenced last week what? that I'm going to actually show you how to do now. Okay. I, I told you about sachets last week, yes, if you recall. Yes, we did talk about that. So I'm going to show you how to make one. Okay. Because I like to use a sachet for this soup. So what I'm going to ask you to do, Bill, is if you hear this sizzle, just give it a stir. stir. We just don't want any color, and we don't want it to uh, to, get, to get brown. We just want to sweat it, as you as okay. you very wisely pointed out. So what I have here is some cheesecloth. Okay. Okay. And you can buy this in any supermarket. It's not it's not expensive. And I like to keep a roll of it in my in my drawer. There's so many different things you can do with cheesecloth. You can strain things with it. You can wring things out with it. Um, when I do, there's an hors d'oeuvre I make. It's uh, spinach, walnuts, blue cheese on bruschetta. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll saute my spinach, and then I'll put it in the cheesecloth, and I'll wring it out to get that excess moisture after it's cooked. So you'll see all this water come out of spinach. And so cheesecloth is very good for doing that as well. So what we're going to do is what I have here, I have some fresh thyme, 
Okay. We always need more time. Oh, we do. We always need more time. T H Y M E, yeah, not T I M E. Okay. Thank you, Bill. But um, about four or five stems of fresh thyme. We're going to lay those on the cheesecloth. One bay leaf. Okay, and some white peppercorns. Those are white peppercorns that we talk about, that Bill, you asked about. Right, we talked about those. So those weeks are the ago. whole peppercorns, and I like to use those in soups and sauces and things like that. So very simply, we put this in the sash in on the, in the cheesecloth, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over on each side, and then fold the ends up to make a little like packet. Okay. And you can do, you know, when you make sachets, you can make them with almost anything it doesn't have to be these ingredients you can put garlic in them you can put um different types of herbs in them you can put really whatever you want in them but what's great about this is we're going to puree this soup but before we puree it we obviously don't want the bay leaf and the peppercorns and all that stuff in the soup and the thyme stems so instead of having to fish through the soup and pull those out individually you just want the flavor right you can just pull that whole sachet out and get rid of it so what I'm going to do, I have some butcher's twine here, okay? Again, not very expensive. You can buy that, too, at the supermarket. We're going to lay the sachet on the butcher's twine, and we're just going to tie it. And I like to tie it a couple times on each side okay. just to make sure that it doesn't come undone, undid in the soup. So we're going to tie it, flip it over, tie it again, flip it over, tie it again. So I'll do it about three, three times I'll tie it. And then I'm going to take scissors, and I'm going to snip this excess string. Okay. Okay, then you can use that for something else. Okay, so we have our sachet made here. And then you skip around the table three times, right? Why do they call it a sachet? I mean, honestly. (laughs) So do we sachet? Do you really want to know why it's called a sachet? It's a French word. It's like a little packet, a sachet. (laughs) You ever have like a sachet you put over your shoulder? When I think of sachet, don't they do that in square dancing? I I don't know, to be honest (laughs) with you. I'm I'm not the square dancer myself, but then we take this whole thing. And just toss it in. Don't they? St- do they still do square dancing at the uh, farm show in Harrisburg? I'm sure they, they do. Got to. That was I like a big to. part of it. It was yeah. so fun because when when I used to have cable, um, <laughs> can't watch my own show. But when I used to have cable, the PCN network used to show the square dancing, and I think that was the most enjoyable part of the whole farm show that just let up last week. Yeah, I did actually. I saw I saw some clips. Broccoli stems, here they are. Yes. We just cut them. Stem o broccoli. Yes, just the stems right now. We cut them, I cut them in half, cut them in half, like quartered okay. them, and then sliced them. We're going to add those to the pot as well. Just the stems. The stems are a little woodier, a little harder. They're going to take longer to cook than the uh, florets. Okay. And that's why we'll add those first. Now, this whole thing right here, I'm going to put it on about medium heat. We're going to let this sweat for about 15 minutes, okay? Now, as this cooks, what we're looking for is we want the stems to be about al dente. So we want them to be soft, but not too soft. Okay. Okay, we don't want it to be mush. And then what we're going to do to that is we have some chicken stock here we're going to add to those. Okay. To that, and then we'll continue. That's uh, our soup-making process. But again, this is all the, the flavor-building process. Whenever you're making soups or homemade soups, it's all a process, like I said. Right. You have that flavor, that foundation. It's like building a house. You yeah. can't build a house without a soup. Well, you can build a house without a solid foundation, but it's going to collapse. So when you're making a soup, a sauce, um, a stock, whatever, you need to really layer the flavors and have a solid foundation. So that's what we're doing well, right here. While you stir that, let's take our first break. Okay. So we will be back. Don't touch that radio dial with more Just Cooking. We're going to continue making our broccoli cheese soup. And we're also going to talk about some other just uh, fun soup facts in general that I have pulled up. So we will be right back, and we are being served up to you today by the Big Barn Country Store in Delhi, by Pareka Chiropractic Center, Inc., by 4th Street Barbecue, by the Herald Standard, and on FCTV by Phil Giannetti Motors. And you're watching Just Cook It on Fayette TV Channel 77 and also at JustCookIt.tv. And you're listening to Just Cook It Radio on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors is providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com.
good to have you back. You're listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV, Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I'm Mario Pregga here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley, and we're making broccoli cheddar soup. Did you know it's my newest addition in the parking lot? I didn't. Yeah. That I got from Phil Giannetti Motors. Uh, so it's yeah, yours it's now, mine officially. Now. It's okay. mine officially. So as the of test drive turned into yours. Yeah, that's so good. I, I, I bought my journey. I named it Sentimental. Sentimental. That's so good. it's a sentimental journey. <laughs> Sorry. It's nice. I have two journeys now. No, seriously, we have a white one and a gold one. <laughs> oh, good. So they're like siblings. Yeah. So we got our broccoli cooking, our broccoli stems, garlic, onions, some olive oil, and our sachet with bay leaf, thyme, and peppercorns in our pot. We're going to let that continue to cook. Okay. And uh, just until, like I said, the broccoli stems are al dente, and then at that point we'll add our stock. And you can use vegetable stock. We're going to use chicken stock just because n- none of none of the three of us are vegetarians or vegans in here. No, not nope. that I like know little, of. Not yeah, I, I like that little I know I'm flavor. not because I had, I had steak last night. It was the best piece of meat I've had in a long time. That's good. We went out back last night for ah. our anniversary, and um, what was interesting is, is that— Did you get the bloomin' onion? Uh, darn right I did. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and got the 22 ounce of the Sam Adams seasonal too, ah, which was well uh, done. really nice. You didn't get the Fosters? No, I see I'm not a big Fosters fan. But it's Australian. I understand beer. that, but still. Um, but my wife had something last night and I've never had one before. Okay. And I tasted hers. She had an old fashioned. Oh, I love old fashioned. It's one of my favorites. And I think I think in the future and I know we've done it on TV where they had a mixologist on. Uh-huh. We need to look into having someone on and do mixed drinks on the air. Yeah, I mean, I know that. Mike would be Oh my 100%. gosh. <laughs> he I mean, just Mike <laughs> just woke up. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. I think it'd be a great We've done beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've talked wine before. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. we haven't had anybody in. We should do. We can do that. I love old fashions. Yeah. It's one of my favorite cocktails. I've never had one before. And you tried it yesterday? I tried it yesterday. Think? It was really good. Yeah. And they're using, um, I guess there's Jack Daniels, has the Jack Daniels honey now. Yeah. That is actually very good. It's smooth. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm drinking one now. It's uh, Jim Beam has something called Devil's Cut. Hmm. That my wife bought me a bottle for Christmas. We couldn't find it for two weeks because she hid it from me. <laughs> we <laughs> finally, finally found it. I remember it. you saying that. He's not drinking it right this second. No. He means he's in the process. You don't know. It could be in my well, coffee. Yeah, well, <laughs> he may be drinking. If it's he gets really hey, happy can, later. Can you answer me a question? You made I'll a try. comment on Twitter this week uh-huh. about coffee consumption. Yes. And my name was brought up yes. in it. What, who was that too? Because I couldn't find what that was about. Uh, it's just a, it, it's an account on Twitter that just spits out random okay, facts. Okay, yeah. And one of the facts was uh, it said Voltaire regularly drank, like, six was it 62 to 70 Who's cups Voltaire? of coffee a day? He's a French philosopher. Oh, okay. I okay. had to edit it a little to fit my 140 I got characters. You. I got in. you. But um, it made me think about you because of your coffee, Bill Alexander. My, yeah, my coffee consumption. Yes. So I, I, I saw that, and, and following Twitter now, it's been a while since I've been this, but now I'm getting the alerts and everything else uh-huh. every time I'm tagged. And it's been quite interesting. Also, the people in the food industry that are now following us yes. from the people that did nas- that mm-hmm. I found out National Soup of the Month. So one day this week was Tea Day or whatever that was. Uh-huh. and this Hot tea. Hot tea. And it was really interesting, though. So. Yeah, it's fun. So jump on Twitter with us. Go to Twitter.com. Follow us at Mario Parekh, at Bill Alexander, at Mike Sackley, and at Just Cook It Radio for the program. And if you're watching us on TV, you'll actually see uh, the follow us on Twitter, and you'll see our handles in the bottom of the screen. Absolutely. And you'll be able to and, uh, find us and follow us. And along with Twitter, you can also give us a call right now yes. while we're in studio. 724-438-4593 is the station number. And if you're calling, uh, if you're listening on the Internet, 855-590-0590 is that number. So... Bill, while this cooks and it's getting it, it a smells few minutes really good. left, Mike, we were in break, and Mike goes, "The sound effects are really cool." <laughs> <laughs> and those are real, by the They're way. Those aren't effects. dubbed into the board or anything. That's the actual this food is cooking. Not, this is not fake uh, no, cooking because we do actually cook here. Um, I want to talk about ten surprisingly fascinating facts about soup. It's hot. Is the t- well? That's one. <laughs> I don't know if that's surpri- <laughs> fas- fascinating, surprisingly hey, fascinating. For some people, it might be. <laughs> so okay, so we I found this column. There's ten surprising facts, and I was it was really interesting when I read it. So I'm going to read them now, and you can give us some commentary on them. Number one, Americans sip over ten billion bowls of soup every year. I believe that. I really. That's do. a lot of soup. I mean, the money that the Campbell and the Lipton soup companies have made has to be. I mean, has to be astronomical. Now, are you are you a canned soup fan, or do you like to make it your own, or have your wife make it? Um, 
yes and no. Depends on who makes it. And I've had some very good canned soups that have low sodium in it. I've had recently something called package soups uh-huh. that all the ingredients are in there. You dump it in and add the water. Okay. The one company is Bear Creek that we found. And I had a potato soup that was just wonderful, that was very good. And But the thing is, it goes back, and we talked about this whenever we did the whole craft spaghetti thing, is that Lipton soup, box soups, um, Lipton noodle soup. They had giggle noodle soup. Yeah. And they had that. And Lipton noodle soup in my house mm-hmm. now has become a comfort food. Yeah. Because yeah. my kids will eat it. My wife will add a little bit of rice in it or, or a little macaroni in it to, to, to um, supplement it. Uh-huh. But it still tastes the way I remembered as a kid. Yeah. And I did it. That's funny you mentioned that because I wrote a column on thurs ran on thursday in the herald standard about my top five comfort foods yeah i saw so you that can check that out did you agree with, with that i agreed with most of them yeah. okay good just uh, checking the, the the one that um why did it just escape me that you said you just uh started eating oh meatloaf meatloaf yes what do you put in your meatloaf what do i put in my meatloaf i make it like i said like almost like meatballs so i usually do a mixture of beef pork and veal okay and then i uh, i actually make it there's a french technique um, and it's There's called, a lot of butter in there. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Cream. <laughs> oh, okay. It's called when you make like a pate or a terrine. Yes. You make a force meat, and so okay. I usually do it that way. I put it in the the ground meat in a food processor. Okay. With like a with like an egg white and some heavy cream, and puree that, and then I cook like carrots, onions, celery on the stove. Mm-hmm. I sweat those down and cook those slow, chill those, and then I fold that back into the meatloaf, and then I season it with some special some seasonings. Okay. Form into the loaf. And then there's a there's a technique to put a little canal down the center yes. of it to hold the sauce. And I like to make my meatloaf on a sheet pan as opposed to in a loaf pan, just because I feel like it gives it a little more color and it allows it to cook a little oh, more evenly. Yeah. And then you put your sauce in your glaze or whatever. Like I said, I prefer a honey mustard glaze on mine, but you can do the my t- wife traditional does a, tomato. My wife does a ketchup glaze yeah. on hers, using, of course, Heinz ketchup. I mean, and again, I will eat the ketchup or the tomato glaze. I'm not going to turn it down. But, but you if said I you never brothers, ate that as a kid? I, I didn't often. It wasn't something that was made often in my household or in... Uh, See, my mother's meatloaf I hated. Oh, really? Because my mother put all this stuff in it. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I don't know if it was supplementing it, but it just didn't taste good. Mm. My wife makes a meatloaf that there's no leftovers it's gone when it's set on the mm-hmm. table my grandmothers used to make le- or leftovers used to make meatloaf yeah. occasionally but um my mother rarely if ever because my father that's one of the foods he doesn't like he's uh, not a big fan I wonder of. why he's not a, there's two things that i know i mean he'll eat but he would rather not have meatloaf and cream corn those I see. I love cream things. corn. I do too. On fried potatoes. Uh huh. I made cream corn a couple years ago for Christmas, and man, was yeah. he upset with me. Yeah, he I'm was sure. just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and it was delicious cream corn. Everyone else loved it. He just doesn't like. Now the other thing, and I did, and when I moved down here twenty plus years ago, um, we had, and I never heard of it before, but it, instead of meatloaf, it's called ham loaf. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I and know it's what you made mean. very similar, the same way, and I love that. Mm-hmm. And you have to, and you have to have. You call the butcher shop ahead, and they get yep. the meat prepared for you, and everything else, and it's really good. And you yeah. do, and you make it very similar to the way prepare it's very similar to the way you do meatloaf, but it also it, you glaze it like you would a ham. Mm-hmm. So. The best meatloaf I've ever had, I actually made when I was working at at the, at the restaurant, and it was one of those things where we used to have what we called the Scooby Olympics. Okay. So when the chef would leave, and this probably give me in trouble, but when he would leave, you don't work would, there anymore, <laughs> right? We would all. Um, Make our own what we called Scooby snacks, which okay. were just snacks we would eat. If right. We were slow, and we would call it the Scooby Olympics, where we would all make a certain thing, and then we would have the, someone from either the pastry shop or the wait staff or whatever taste them, and then declare a winner anonymously. Slow night at Duquesne Club. So, occasionally yeah. it happens. So <clears throat> I made meatloaf, and I, what I did was I made it like the way I said, but I ground my own meat and everything because we had all the tools there. Right. And then instead of um, throwing it in the oven. I actually steamed it first to okay. keep it moist, and then I took it from the steamer, glazed it, and finished it at really high heat in the oven to get a crust on the outside. So it was so moist in the center, but really crispy on the outside with that honey mustard glaze. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. Good. It was some of the best work I've ever done. There if was I do something so myself. I was watching on TV this week. Um, it must have been Tuesday night when the cold snap. Monday night when the cold snap hit, and. Um, you, you talk about comfort food, and we've talked about kibasi before, and we've gone through this whole thing. That everybody knows what a Reuben is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Corned beef, um, sauerkraut, mm-hmm. 
uh, Russian or thousand dollars dressing, uh-huh. Swiss right. cheese, Swiss cheese on rye bread. Uh-huh. Rick Seaback from WQED yeah. does a, does programs, and we're uh-huh. trying to get Rick on the program. We've talked about this before Christmas. They went to a place in Pittsburgh, and I can't remember. They do a Polish Reuben. Interesting. Instead of using the corned beef, they use kibasi. Hmm. And it looked sounds good. It looked amazing, and I'm thinking. That would be one of these things that you would make on a cold winter day. Mm-hmm. What soup would you make with that sandwich? Cause with with the kibasi Reuben? Either one, yeah. Um, you have to let me think about this. As I, I put you on the I spot, I would say like either I would what I would personally like to eat, um, either like a potato. Mm, okay. You know, or um, like potato leek would be re- would, be would be really good, good with that, or um, like a barley. A vegeta- I had a my barley wife vegetable. Made, my wife made a barley vegetable a few weeks mm-hmm. ago from scratch, and it was amazing. Yeah, I would enjoy that. Yeah. But I, as we talked, I just added our broth, chicken, our chicken broth. broth, to our to our pan. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this to a boil. As soon as this comes to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat down to back to a simmer, and we're going to add our florets. Okay. Okay, these broccoli florets. Then we're going to let those cook. Those are going to take about 10 minutes until they get tender. Okay. And then at that point, we're going to take all of this very carefully. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this at that point. You can either, my personal favorite way is I would get rid of the sachet, okay. just throw it away, pull right. out tongs, throw it away, and then I would take a stick blender, a hand blender, okay. and just puree it right in the pot. Um, if you don't have that, you can, of course, ladle it out into a blender very carefully. You only want to fill the blender about halfway at the most because it will expand because it's hot as it, okay. as it purees. Put the lid on with the kitchen towel on top of it to be very careful because it's hot, and then puree it until it's smooth. Now, the question for you, because I know I have a very short attention span sometimes, what are all the ingredients in this broccoli cheddar soup? In the pot right now or in the whole thing? The whole thing. Um, Okay, so we started with our onions and we we started with our olive oil. Right. Then we added our onions and garlic. We made our sachet, thyme, bay leaf, peppercorns. Okay. And then we added our broccoli stems. Okay. We had our chicken stock. Okay. Bring it up and then um, add our broccoli florets into the into the mix. Puree it and then we're gonna finish it with some um, um, some cheddar cheese, obviously. Right. Um, heavy cream, salt, sea salt, white pepper, and a little pinch of cayenne. And I'm cheating because I'm looking ahead. I see that the the uh, shredded cheese is already shredded. Yes. That you didn't do that yourself. You bought no, it that way. I bought it that way. To Just make it because easier. it's more convenient. Yes, to make life easy. Okay. When when I design my recipes, now in a perfect world, I would buy really good cheese and do it myself. Right. But when I design my recipes, and what people need to understand is, number one, when we're doing them on the radio, we only have a certain allotted time, and number two, that's good for me because it keeps me in the mindset of what can I do quickly. If I'm making this at home, yeah. I, if I don't have to do it, I don't want to do it. It makes a mess. It takes time, right. and that's how I feel most people are. So as long as it doesn't compromise. The, the end result of the product, I'm all for doing things that are... And when we started this a year ago, we had the same conversation uh-huh. because you're trying to make it so anybody can make these exactly. meals. You don't need any training. You don't need a right. gourmet chef. I mean, he's the one trained. I'm mm-hmm. the one that comes to eat. Right. <laughs> and I'm trying to bring it down to everybody else's level. Someone was watching us on TV the other day, and they caught me, and they go, do you cook now too? I said no. I just eat really well. I, <laughs> but I but can't. You could. Ca- I could because a lot of this stuff that I'm watching you do, I can, I can, I can do because I'm not threatened by it, which is right. really nice. And that's the idea. And I think that's the whole thing behind it. And I mean, for a while, we 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 needed to find something that we could do that no one else did on the radio, and we found it mm-hmm. because now you're making it step by step, and as. Um, our one caller from Rose calls from Nemecol and says yes. she knows how to cook. So she's able to follow along with us, uh-huh. and she can imagine it. It's that whole idea of theater of the mind, the way radio is supposed to be, and us doing something yeah. that people aren't familiar with. If, if you already know how to cook, then I just the goal is to add to your repertoire to give you some ideas and some things that you can right. incorporate into your own cooking. Um, if you don't cook, it's to give you things that make you feel like you can cook. And, and the fact that, number one, you can listen to us now while you're driving. Yeah. You can listen to us at home while you're having your coffee, reading the paper, doing the dishes, whatever it is you do in the morning, you can listen to us. If you hear something you like or something you want to see, hop over to justcookit.tv and now you can watch it. So now right. you've heard it, you've seen it, you've heard it again. It just makes and it even, so much easier to learn. Even going to justcookit.net, you can pull the recipe. Yeah. And then you Absolutely. can go and listen to the – we record every show as a podcast. 
We're on pretty much every audio platform out there right now, so it's convenient to you. Mm -hmm. Get the app, whatever you want, press it, have Mm -hmm. us in your favorites, we're on. Follow us on Twitter. And follow us on Twitter. Now, does it happen immediately? It happens within 12 hours of the show airing, but it's still there. Yeah, absolutely. And you you can go back and listen to the previous programs. So say three weeks. Which, by the way... The wife really enjoyed that. That was good last week. Oh, the lobster is that? Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad that was you really liked good. it. That was an early anniversary present. Yeah, thank for you her. very much. Your early <laughs> but um, or your anniversary present. But say three weeks from now, you feel like some broccoli cheddar soup. Well, you, you go back. You can go on the line and get yeah. it. You don't have to say, "Oh, I forget how to do right. it," because the recipe will still be there. The audio recording mm-hmm. and the video is all still there. Right. So you can go back. It's like your own online multimedia cookbook. Now, the other thing I wanted to bring up too, and we've talked about this in the past and I don't think people realize this that you do something, or you did and I don't know if you still do, called Chef Chef Hangout. Yes. And you do I'm cooking lessons. Involved, yep. And you need to explain to the audience that they could actually do a cooking lesson with you yes. in their own kitchen uh-huh. by watching you by signing on. Yep, all they need is a computer and, okay. a, and a webcam. Okay. And so basically how it works is I'll offer classes, and if you want anything in specific, you can call us uh, on the show or email us from justcooking.net and tell us. And then you, uh, you, you pay a small fee, for obviously, for my time and the product I have to buy, and then immediately you get sent a list of the ingredients and the recipes, everything you need for that okay. particular dish. At the time of the class, you log on to chefhangout.com, you sign in, which is just a username and a password that you make, and then I am in my kitchen, you're in your kitchen, and via our webcams, I can show you how to do something, and then I can watch you do it and talk to you as you do it. And what's really nice about it, it's like you're having your own private instructor with right. you, and, and you do it in small groups, right? Right, and what's cool about it is a lot of people who like it are families who live far apart across country. So like your family, Bill, right. you family in where, Arizona? Arizona. So um, you can... You could, you know, be on in PA at your house. They could be in Arizona at their house. You could make the same thing, and then at the end of the class, I leave, and you can stand have there and eat together. and have dinner together, which is really a cool thing. So at this point, our soup's boiling. Just in one second, I'm going to add our broccoli florets to the pot. And if you want more information about the Chef Hangout, um, post it on the website. So it's on there. Yeah, there's on a link on there. You can go to justcookit.net and get that. And i got to quit hitting the microphone stand. Let's see. Last week it was chicken <laughs> broth. This week it's balls. <laughs> it's okay. It's real. This is real. This that is just shows real. you this is real. It's live. So we're going to let this go for 10 minutes, okay, just until the broccoli is tender. You don't want it mush. Right. But when it's tender, it's ready. And then you're going to switch it. We're going to swap it out. So well, if you want to. When you, let's do this then. While you're switching out, let's take a break. And the magic of radio slash TV. We'll be back with... Uh, the final product. That's right. So don't touch that radio dial. Just Cook It is served up to you today by the Big Barn Country Store in Delhi, by Pareka Chiropractic Center, Inc., by 4th Street Barbecue, and by the Herald Standard. And you're watching Just Cook It on Fayette TV Channel 77 and streaming online at justcookit.tv. And you're listening to Just Cook It Radio on many platforms out there and also here on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. Bill Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV, Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I'm Mario Pareca here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley, and we are making some broccoli cheddar soup. Wait, and you don't mention that we're on Blog Talk, we're on Switcher, we're on Swell, we're on huh. Tuned In, <laughs> we're yeah. on Lipson. Where else are we at? We're everywhere else. Just go to JustCookIt.net yeah, and you can see everything. Yep. There's links to everything hey, on there. One thing, and, and for those of you that uh, the 4th Street Barbecue in Chalaray, that's one of the Hanson brothers from the movie Slapshot that yes, does their commercial. Dave Hanson. And it, it's really funny to, to hear that because people are, who is that? Who is that? And that's who it is. But we've had other sports people on the program. Are we getting Alex Presley back in um, 
studio. I, I'll call. I'll talk I, to him. I think I'm we sure. Should. I'm sure he will be more than happy. Because I think, especially we, if we feed him. If yeah, we well, feed him, it's a slam dunk. Well, that's why Mike keeps coming back. That's I'm his. surprised Mike wasn't here last week, voice or not. <laughs> Just come to eat. Yeah. Jim goes. I didn't know you were going to feed me too. <laughs> So, look a surprise on his face, yeah. right? So we took our soup that we cooked in the previous two segments, and we pureed it. And what you want to do after you puree it, you want to add it back to your pot, okay? And then you want to go back to the stove. Now, you don't want to boil it, but you want to go on, like, a low heat, keep it warm, warm right. it up. And then what I just added was our cheddar cheese. Okay. Okay, so I have some extra, sh- some sharp, shredded, sharp cheddar cheese. Okay, so we added that, and we're just going to stir it until, that, until that's all incorporated and that melts in. And we're also going to add... I have some heavy cream. cream. Now this is just going to give you don't have to use heavy cream. You can use skim milk. Light you cream. can you don't have to use anything if you don't want to. But I like to add heavy cream to give it some richness and some body. Speaking of the cream and that, we and I make fun of you because of how much butter we use on the show. We didn't use any butter today. But did you hear that the the National Butter Board is saying that butter is becoming more popular again? Of course it is. And the reason is is because people are realizing that um, margarine is one step away from plastic. Yeah, margarine's not good. And that they're blaming it. And I don't want to say they're blaming it, but they're saying it's because of the generation that's coming up now, grew up watching cooking shows. And what do the chefs on cooking shows use, especially Paula Dean? Mm-hmm. They use butter. butter. Yeah. So butter is, is, the real food. is the real food. And that's the whole thing. And people like to be able to read the back of their container to say it has milk, mm-hmm. salt, mm-hmm. it's churned. Yeah. That's it. And, you know, when you look at, like, people who live in France, you know, you say French cooking, they use a lot of butter, a lot right. of cream. But a lot of those people are extremely healthy. Yes. You know? So it's not – I'm not saying to go out and eat three sticks of butter today by any means. But it's it's not as bad for you as you think, as, as the as, media portrays well, it to As it used to be portrayed by the media. And right. if you go to the farm show, again, I saw the butter statue this week. Uh, did you see the big one? It was saluting milkshakes. Ooh. It was really interesting. Oh. One, butter is saluting milkshakes. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So now I'm going to season our soup. Some salt. Sea salt. Sea salt. I sea salt. Okay. Some white pepper. Okay. Just a touch. And just a very small touch of cayenne. This is going to give it a little heat, wake it up a little bit, but you don't want to. Yeah. Just about like that. Okay. Stir that in. We're just going to whisk this together. And if this is hot, that's how she wrote for this. That's how simple that is. Which is good because we have eight minutes left. (laughs) I mean, it works out perfect every week. With our eight minutes, right before I spoon that bowl this up for you guys to try, I want to go over just a few more of those top ten fascinating <laughs> soup facts because I promised and we didn't get to them. <laughs> we never Number do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bill, the earliest evidence of making soup was in 6,000 B.C. And guess what kind of soup it was? I would even guess. Hippopotamus. No, really? Yeah. 99% of all American homes have soup in them. I believe. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> In the 1700s, the French the French king was so enamored with himself, he had his royal chefs create a soup that would allow him to see his own reflection in the bowl. As a result, consomme was born. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That'll be dark. You know, consomme is the real fortified, real yes. clear broth. Yes. Uh, let's see. In the French court of Louis XI, the ladies' meals were mostly soup because they were afraid that chewing would give them wrinkles. Okay. In Europe during the 17th century, the spoon was invented to accommodate the giant ruffles that people wore around their necks at the time. <laughs> How were they eating them? Oh, they, they would s- s- yeah, pick up the bowl okay, and drink I got it. You. I but got when you. you have these huge ruffles, as shown in this picture here. Oh, yes. That'd be very yeah, difficult. You can't to do, do it. That'd be very difficult. Women are twice as likely to order soup at a restaurant and, than men. And I believe that. I really do. I love soup. Yeah. See, one of my favorite soups, which coincides with today, is wedding soup. Mm. I love a good wedding soup. And... Just to let everybody know, especially the people that I know, is my mother-in-law never made wedding soup. Just to let you know that. But uh, there's a story behind that that the people listening will argue with me that she gave them a recipe years ago, which she didn't. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I love wedding soup. I always have. My yes. aunt, who uh, lives in McKee's Rocks, um, my uncle was a chef, um, Italian chef, uh, mm-hmm. and he made an excellent wedding soup. And when he passed away, she started making it, and it was just amazing what uh, what they could put in it. And I and I never thought I'd like f- spinach floating in soup, but I do. It's one of those one of those good. Well, things. Well, it's not always spinach. A lot of times, it's I like different. it with spinach. It's a green. Yeah, it's green. It's whatever. Like Swiss it is. chard or something of that nature. So we're gonna bowl these soups up. Looks really, really good. 
And this is fresh made, not from the can. Not. F we just made it here, and I like to finish mine after I put the soup in the bowl with a little hit of cheddar cheese on top, just to give it that little extra. Okay. You gonna tweet this? Yeah, I'll tweet that. Okay. Let me clean it up a little. <laughs> We're running out of time. So go to justcookit.net. You can get the recipe for my, this broccoli cheddar soup that we prepared here. There's one for you, Bill. And I also brought some bread for us to, to use because I like to have some bread with my soup. I don't know about you. Mike, you got the one that just made it. They're going to make it on it Twitter. Was, <laughs> so if you want to go to, um, like I said, justcookit.net, you can get the recipe. And if you want to go to our website or call us or tweet us, um, if you have a soup, we're going to do soups in the next couple weeks just to celebrate National Soup Month. Do it till the end of the month. Yeah. If you would like to uh, request a soup, or, request a soup or send a recipe for a soup or join in the soup conversation, how, whatever you want, just get in touch with us. We're not hard to find. We need plasticware. Spoons. <laughs> spoons. Can't eat soup without spoons, right? I could, but it, would, it wouldn't look very good on TV. I don't care <laughs> what they did in the 17th century. Bill wore his ruffles this morning, yes, his did. giant ruffles. So, so we're gonna have some of this. Bro, I hope it meets your specifications, Bill. Yes, it does. That's okay. very good. Good. That is excellent. It's a, it's fresh. It's got. It's not the same as the th the mm -mm. stuff from the can. It's not. The one in the can has much more salt in it. And yeah. And this one is actually, you can taste the broccoli. You can taste the cheese. It is very good. What do you think, Mike? I'm always impressed. Yeah, so. it, it, what it, you doesn't do it doesn't take much for me. With so. what you can do in a short period of time. Quite yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, if you wanted to add salt, you can also obviously add more salt to it. I mean, it I like need, to, It doesn't need it. I just think I like the freshness of it mm. because a lot of people, when they make broccoli cheese soup, will use a thickener where they'll, they'll start with a roux, which is the flour and the fat, mm -hmm. just to thicken it and make like a bechamel almost, add your cream and then cook your broccoli. But I like the freshness. I like that we didn't use any thickener in this. The, the thickness comes from the broccoli. Broccoli itself. Yeah. And, and I, you used the whole broccoli. Mm -hmm. There was no waste other than the leaves mm -hmm. that were like three. Yeah, this is just the, the stems are used, the florets are used. And it's just, it's really clean, really fresh. You can taste the cheddar cheese, um, the broccoli, and it's its rich, it's delicious, and it's one of my favorites, and especially part, in the cold weather. And the best part is, you know all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. There's no foreign words yep. <laughs> on the side And of if you're looking for it to be healthy, mm -hmm. you can leave the cream out. You can either, you can use skim milk or no milk at all, mm -hmm. and it's, it'll be dairy-free. And you can even use vegetable broth instead of chicken broth, and now you have a vegan oh, well, soup. But you would have, well, you, how can you do that? You wouldn't cheese, put the though? cheese in. So it'd just be broccoli. If you want a soup. vegan, it'd be broccoli yeah. soup. But, um, yeah, you can you can use less cheese if you like, if you want it to be healthier. Mm, more cheese, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the only real unhealthy portions of this are the cream and the cheese. That's all. There's, there, and that's really not fat. unhealthy. It's just no. in proportion. It's just fat. You know, there's a little bit of fat, but fat carries flavor, so it helps richen it, give it a good mouthfeel, give it a good flavor. But that is excellent. That really is good. Thank you. So now you can make broccoli cheddar soup at home without opening a can. I like that and idea. And so can everyone else. If you go to justcookit.net and get the recipe, follow us on Twitter, because that's all the time we have today. So, again, justcookit.net. And we make it under the wire every mm -hmm. week. So we will be back next Saturday with another soup that we'll be preparing. So find us on Twitter. Send us a tweet letting us know what soup you want to see. Or go to justcookit.net. Go to the Contact Us page, and you can fill it out. Let us know what soup you want us to make next week. Same with you, Mike and Bill. You guys yeah. come up with anything, let me know, because I'll decide probably on Tuesday or Wednesday, okay. and then we'll start getting it together for the month of the soup. Yep. Yeah. And it's the year of the Twitter, so follow us at Mario Pareca, <laughs> at, Bill, <laughs> or at Bill Alexander, at Mike Sackley, at Just Cook It Radio. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. We will talk to you next week. Any parting words, gentlemen? Uh, no. Oh, you're going to be at Market District. I am. Eagle Thank you for Monday. reminding me. I will be at the Market District John Eagle Robinson on Monday teaching a soups class. There you go. So if you want to make more soups you, or learn how to make more soups, you can check it out on our website at justcookit.net on our calendar and events page. Sounds good. So for Mike Sackley and for Bill Alexander, I'm Mario Pareca. Thank you for listening. We will talk to you next Saturday right here on Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. Thanks for listening to Just Cook It Radio with Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. For more information on today's program, visit the Just Cook It website at justcookit.net. Here you can listen to the podcast or watch Mario and Bill cook today's recipe on Just Cook It TV. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call 855-590-0590.